Welcome everybody to another edition of the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show here on Rayma Television Network. We've been doing this thing every Thursday, 7 p.m. You have not missed it. And I'm telling you, if you are into fitness at all today or if you've gained 85,000 pounds during the pandemic, <laughs> I got you for real today, baby. We gonna get you right. And my guests today are the experts that have every answer you might have a question to. All right, let's go to New Jersey first. The pretty lady, Miss Brene Holman. What's up, baby? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great. And uh, I'm looking at a, a little bump. Is that what's going on? Oh, it's a big bump. Hold on, let me, yeah. Oh! <laughs> She is, is that, how, 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 how far along are you? December. Eight December. months pregnant. Now, you know, now normally some of y'all get three months and be five times that size. <laughs> so we gonna figure out how to make you look like that. All right. And then we gotta go to Houston and pick up my boy that's doing so well in the Houston area and around the country, actually. Wendell Bertram, what's up, doc? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? The fitness guru. <laughs> Listen, family, I'm so glad you all are here today. I want to jump right in because there are so many questions that people have. And a lot of times they ask the wrong person. Um, like I'll post a lot of stuff on my Instagram about me working out or at the gym or, or, or anytime you see somebody doing that, the people automatically assume you are a trainer or have some kind of inside scoop or inside information on the right way to train. I'm not the one that has that answer because I don't want to be there. <laughs> so I wanted the two of you all to come on and let's just talk about first with you, Brene, from a woman's perspective, how does a woman attack her fitness life differently from a man? Well, I think it all depends on what her goals are. And I think the most important thing is for a woman is to recognize that we have some different organs inside of us and <laughs> we need to really take care of them. Okay. And we have a lot of demands that we put on our body, whether it's working 12 hours, going home, taking care of kids, whatever the case may be, or even giving birth, you know, preparing to have a baby. And we really need to make our bodies strong so that we can do what we are asking our bodies to do or so that our bodies can do what we're asking them to do. So we really need to um, put priority on our health and a lot of women do not do that. It's kind of a back burner idea of, oh, okay, I did everything, maybe I'll get it in a 20 minute workout. But wow. we need to set time aside to make our bodies strong enough for what we're asking them to do. So I think as a woman, we need to take care of that. We also need to make sure that we're strengthening um, our whole entire body, including our core, um, because a lot of women, especially as we go through the transition, sorry, going by, <laughs> as we go through the transition of, you know, giving birth or actually going through pregnancy and then postpartum, a lot of women go through that transition of, you know, separation of the abdominal muscles and changes in their body. And if they're not careful, then they can have, they can cause more damage going back to the gym and not knowing what to do. Got it. So they have to make sure that they're doing it with wisdom and having somebody there to kind of coach them along is really important as well. But we shouldn't be scared of lifting weights. I can say that we need to strengthen our bodies. We need to make sure that we're um, putting priorities on our health. So I know a lot of couples who will go on diets together and the man will drop pounds like that and the woman will still have that weight on her. What, why is that happening? Why is that happening? Good old hormones. <laughs> all of these great hormones inside of our bodies that help us be women and help us do all of these great things that God intended us to do here and, you know, flourish and multiply and all of those things. Um, but they can also be counteractive to a diet plan or a workout plan. And that's when we need to be strategic about what we're doing and how we're doing it. So hours of cardio are not going to work. And I think a lot of women go into it thinking that, okay, if I get on a treadmill for an hour a day, yay, I'm going to, you know, drop these pounds. And that's, that's not the case. We really need to be fixing that up. So I think the education part of that is important. But, um, yeah, good old hormone. Got hormones. it. So, okay. Yeah. So, uh, Wendell, when you're, when you're training, because you do uh, boot camps, when you do a boot camp, do you have males and females there? Yes, I have male and females at camp. 
So tell me how you cater that boot camp so that uh, both sexes get the most out of it. Uh, well, usually at my fit camp, I actually focus on like high intensity training. Uh, so I pretty much like set different sections where I target different parts of the body that I help both male and female get the results that they want. Uh, mainly using like body strength to do it because it's like, uh, like she said earlier, pretty much like the, the cardio, people think that you can do hours of cardio and that's going to help, but it's actually going to do you more damage. It's better if you do some type of weightlifting to help build the muscle so you can turn the fat more into, I mean, the fat more into muscle than just kind of removing everything pretty much. So I hear a lot of people think that when you're trying to get rid of your stomach, that cardio is the way to do that because it burns calories as opposed to doing crunches on top of the fat that's already there and you end up making the what's under the fat hard but the fat still remains on the crunch is that true or false i believe it's very true um like i said i focus more on the uh the body the body strength the weight lifting because i feel like it'll turn more of the fat into muscle more than just trying to burn the fat and then you don't have any muscle mass i have a lot of uh clients especially like females they'll be more focused on like the actual scale and seeing the numbers move but i always like to keep them it's like keep them in check and let them know don't pay attention to the scale pay attention to like your, your inches that you're losing uh you may not see the scale moving because you're doing some type of weight lifting so that keeping the weight amount there but you're burning the actual fat instead gotcha so Brene, when you talk about um and I, and I hate to keep talking about women versus men, but this is a huge thing in both the kingdom and just in society, period. There are a lot of women out there that are body conscious, and it's because of what we think is a nice body. So women try to work toward this picture of what people think is a nice body as opposed to working within their own parameters and having personal goals. How do you get people not to be the magazine or want to be the magazine and be the best at what they are? I think it's okay to have goals as far as, you know, having someone that, okay, she looks really good. Let me try to get to that. That's okay, but I think we also need to be <laughs> realist and think about, okay, this is the body that God gave me. I got some hips, I got some arms, whatever it is, whatever he blessed you with, use that and make that the best package that you possibly can. So I think it's a mind shift as far as, okay, that's appreciate what you see for other people, but that's their body. What can you do for your body and how can you make it the strongest body that you possibly can. And I think if you shift the mindset from a way that you look to a way that you perform or a way that you live and you're focused on a healthy lifestyle, then that's the change of changing from, you know, I'm on a diet plan to I'm on a healthy lifestyle. Agenda. Got it. I think that's the shift, especially in our business, in my business, that's the shift that I've been taking with my clients. Stop looking at the scale. Like Wendell says, stop looking at the scale. Let's think about how your body's performing. Is your, are you healthier now than you were six months ago? Are you able to get up a flight of stairs without, you know, being out of breath? Are you able to lift those bags of groceries without needing help? Are you able to, you know, think about those things? So it's a, it's a mind shift. That, that. So, Wendell, uh, in that mind shift, you have a lot of guys now that, you know, 50 is the new 30. And before, you know, you would have a 50 year old thinking that they were old and they would stop or a 60 year old thinking they were old and they would stop. But now you have 50 and 60 year old year old people who are just as fit as 20 and 30 year olds. But is there a shift in how you could make that happen? Are you are you risking hurting yourself at 60 trying to do what a 30 year old does? Is that is any truth to any of that? Uh, no, I think, um, like she mentioned, it's pretty much like the mindset. It's a mental change. And I, I, I feel like people now, uh, they are thinking about their health, they're more health conscious. And they know when they get older, they have to deal with more now. So I, uh, then, so I feel like they're shifting their mind now to like get onto that path. So that when they're at that age, they can still continue to work out and live a healthier lifestyle. Um, but I feel like once you get to that age, you should know like your limits, you'll know your body limits of how much to go before you can actually hurt yourself. So I actually applaud people that's already in their 50s and 60s are still working out and living a healthier lifestyle. In your fit camp, what's the age range? Um, typically, we have uh, people from around the age of 18 through maybe 40 to 45 that usually comes out. Okay. Big range. Okay. And, and what about you? 
Uh, it ranges. My youngest right now is about 25, and my oldest is 16. Yeah, because I'm, I, when I go to the gym, I walk through the gym, and it's like, these people have got to be like 50, 55, 60 years old. And, and when I was 25 and in the gym, everybody looked my age because we all thought 55 was old. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I walk through the gym now and I'm like, these can't be like grandpa. I'm a grandfather. And I always have people tell me when I say I'm a grandfather, they're surprised at that. But in this, in this day and time that we live, what people see is much different than what we used to think it was. And I'm wondering if that in the fitness realm has transferred into uh, now my clients are a lot older than what I expected them to be. Because both of you all look like you're in your 30s, 20s. Yeah. Yeah. So what, do, do you have any clients that are 55, 60 and you're amazed by what they do and how they do it? I do. I have a client who is, I think she's 60. I don't want to put her on the spot. She's 60 something. Okay. <laughs> 60 good. But I mean, she's keeping up with everything that we're doing. And there are some things that we modify for her, but it's, it's minor things. She is keeping up with her. looks fantastic, but it's that mindset of, I know I need to do this for myself. I'm setting this time aside to work out, to eat healthy. And when I say eat, I mean eat balanced. I don't mean getting rid of going on these crash diets that don't work. So about crash dieting, but I mean, as a lifestyle, she eats healthy, and every once in a while, she'll have her treats and things like that, and that's fine because there's a balance there. So I want to talk about balance. I want to talk about the treats and how you uh, dress people who look a different way, all of that, because uh, Wendell, you have a new business that's about to open. So we'll be right back in a few minutes. Stay close because when we come back, I'm gonna tell you how to multitask you can't just be fitness you got to be fitness you got to be able to do this you got to be able to do this because we're in a pandemic so what do you know how to fall back on to make yourself continue to be forward motion and current so stay close Wendell is coming back Renee is coming back it's the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show on Rayma Television Network stay close I wish I could, but I just don't know how. I don't have the time. I don't have enough technical knowledge to pull this off. I'm too young. No one will listen to me. So what's really holding you back? What if you could create the life you imagine no matter the circumstance or what others think? What if you could move the fear or use it? The choice is yours. Change your thinking, <laughs> you change your life. So if you're willing to take a risk on you to give up something so you can go up, follow me on social media with hundreds of like-minded people becoming the best that they can be. After all, we came to shape the future. Take care. To improve, to impact, to inspire. It's not what I do, but merely who I am, who I'm called to be. I am William A. Brown Sr., overseer and founder of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, California. I'm also an author to the nations, and one of my favorite quotes from my book, The Life Changers Quotes for Life, is leadership is not about control. It's about empowering others to take control of their choices. As overseer of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I invite you to a place of love and no judgment, for we are the church. We are here to repair the breach, for we are the community who are assigned to build communities and become an impact in individual spiritual and natural lives. Visit us, www.EmmanuelChristianCenterInc.com and on Instagram at Emmanuel Christ Inc. I love you all to life and I'll see you soon. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, on our fitness tip show. It is the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show here on Raymond Television Network. I got my guest, 
ready to give you all the information you can use. Um, Brene is here out of New Jersey. Wendell is here out of Houston. And I, we want to talk about this pandemic because when this pandemic hit, not only were the churches hit hard, but the fitness industry was hit extremely hard. When gyms closed down, people really didn't know how to do anything outside on their own without you know the atmosphere and the equipment and all of that. How did you shift, Wendell, from um, the gyms being closed and you still being able to do what you do? Um, actually, it was, it was actually one of the best things that happened to me during this pandemic um, because I do a lot of online coaching so I'm easy to like uh, teach my clients, especially my older clients, simple workouts they can do at home in the comfort of their own home uh, by still giving them a meal plan to eat well, putting them on the right protein, just to let them know that your nutrition comes first, but your exercise is the 20% of it. And you can easily get your exercise by using small things and doing modifications at the home to still use some, have some type of exercise. Oh, nice. So my business actually went up more with doing more on uh, online. Now, that's a blessing. Did you find the same thing, Brene? I did. I moved to online very quickly, <laughs> and uh, I found great benefits from it, and I was able to actually coach more people in less time. So when we talk about, you know, just being ready to shift, you have to be ready to shift when it happens. And we got really creative. We started using things around the house. And for those who didn't have weights, we, you know, modified laundry detergent bottles and <laughs> <laughs> uh, kitchen, the cutting boards as little sliders. We, we got really creative wow. and, and went back into working out for some people and also the connection that they had with working online in a group with other people and being able to see their faces from around the world. So it it really was a, a great time for me and a great trans transition I love it. and i was able to really focus on what are the goals of my business and you know refocus what i'm doing. good one one of the things that was a reason for me asking you the two of you specifically uh to be on the show is because uh one of my mantras is get it done and get it done is you have to have more than just one it you follow me? So once you once you uh, figure out what the get is and you figure out the, what the done is, that it is the work. And one thing that I noticed about both of you is that fitness was not the only thing that you put all your eggs in, all in one basket. Uh, so, uh, Wendell, one of the things that you've got coming up is a, a smoothie bar. Are you opening a business? Yes, I'm opening up a healthy smoothie bar here in Houston, Texas. I'm like really excited about okay. it. Um, my, my biggest thing with me is when I first started my own personal journey with weight loss, uh, I didn't have the support. So I pretty much uh, used social media as a tool to pretty much help me uh, motivate myself to get the results that I wanted. So I wanted to be that person to, to give back to the community, to the people that don't have that support, and uh, pretty much pour back into people to live a healthier lifestyle. So now I'm actually in the process of opening up an actual location in Houston uh, that serves uh, healthy uh, smoothies. Uh, we have lit energy teas. Just anything to get the community feeling better and a healthy pet. Now, I'm going to blow y'all mind because when I met Wendell, I met him through a before and after picture. And at the start of this journey, how much did you weigh? I weighed 215 pounds. How much weight did you lose to now, to today? I went on, originally I went on to lose 60 pounds. Um, and then after 60 pounds, then I focused more on that beginning. Like I said, I didn't know anything about working out, so I focused on cardio. So I lost a lot of the weight, but then I kind of shifted my mindset once I learned more and I started more of the weight lifting. So I started picking up more weight and muscle uh, rather than just losing all of the fat. So we're talking 215 pounds at what height though? Um, five, six. I mean, so See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the key right there. <laughs> Because you say 215 pounds to somebody who's six feet, and they were like, well, you know, he's normal, because they see you sitting down. But at 5'6", at 215 pounds, man, you lost a lot, and we celebrate that, Doc. Yeah, yeah, we want to make sure we encourage that. And, uh, um, Brene, one of the things that you were doing that I liked was this clothing line. And the clothing line for women is not just for women who have a tight waist, it's a clothing line for wherever you are in your fitness journey to kind of help you um, do it better and look good while doing it. Tell us about the clothing line. 
Uh, Earl is my little baby right now until my other baby comes, but <laughs> so fitness line that caters to the queens out there that are striving to be the best versions of themselves that they possibly can be. And it's all about going strong, being bold, being courageous, making sure that, you know, they're putting time into themselves and going to the gym, be it, you know, doing all of those things to create a healthy lifestyle so that they can be the best versions of themselves. So it's sweatshirts and tights and leggings and, you know, sports bras and all of those things. So anything that you would need going to the gym, we have it. And they can order that through what? GoStrongApparel.com. GoStrongApparel.com. Make sure you all go and get that right now. Oh, she's wearing it. Okay. All right, cool. Uh, and and uh, Wendell, when they go and they want to do um, like a boot camp with you in Houston, do you travel at all or is it all in Houston? Uh, as of now, it's all in Houston. So I partner with another trainer here in Houston and we pick two weekends out of the month um, that we're available and we do a fit camp, um, offer energy teas as well for sale. Pretty much just have a fit camp, get people out and get healthy twice a month uh, for our 60 minute workout. And they can sign up for that boot camp through what? Uh, we have an Instagram page. It's extreme. That's X T R E M E H six. Oh, I'm sorry, Extreme sixty H T X. So Extreme sixty Houston. That's our bootcamp page. All right. So now I need you all to tell me something. A lot of times people say, "I stop eating bread. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't drink nothing with sugar in it anymore." Um, does, and you, as a trainer, when you hear that, what goes through your head? Let's go with you first, Brene. <laughs> so I, when I first started my journey, I started as a bodybuilder. <laughs> so right. I had to go from, you know, I was on, I was drinking Pepsi and I was only eating carbs to not having any of those, not having carbs, not having soda or anything. And that was too dramatic. So after, you know, I, I did really well with the competitions, but afterwards there was this, uh, Horrible experience of just eating everything. <laughs> and it was, it was really bad. So, and my hormones during that time were, were up and down and I was very moody and it just wasn't a fun thing. But I learned out of that how to create balance. So once I finished the competitions, then it was okay. How do I include this fitness and this nutrition into a lifestyle that I can actually sustain? So do you eat bread? not sustainable to you know take all of the bread take all of the sugars for some or i should say many people it's not sustainable so with those, Thank those you, fresh Jesus. diets or you know those the yo-yo dieting and all of that it's because you have not created a lifestyle that you can maintain so yeah. we have to create a balance of you know having a treat maybe on friday or having a treat here and there so figuring out what works for you um thank I you so, Jesus. Much healthy, so i make sure that i eat healthy most of the time and then i have my little chocolate chip cookie without guilt so i'm going to give me a sandwich because i had stopped eating bread <laughs> i'm going to get that joint <laughs> when do, do you drink do you have anything with sugar in it do what do, how do you do your thing uh, so I'm typically, like she said, like it's all about, uh, like she said, a crash diet versus a lifestyle. And you don't want to complete, completely put yourself on a strict diet because typically when people do that, they quit. It's easy to quit because you're so strict on yourself about eating anything. So with me, I focused on a lifestyle. Mainly the whole week I eat very well. And I shifted from having like a cheap day to having a cheap meal. So you can enjoy and treat yourself, but I'll make sure like, okay, I put in my head mentally when I do have this bread or when I have, do have this drink that have these extra sugars in it, I know that I have to burn this off with my next workout. Or I'll Got eat it, it. Yeah. Um, that way I'm gaining the energy and burn it off throughout the day than rather eating it right at night before bed. So listen, you talking to a brother and you, you hear trainers talk about this all the time, this meal prep, and I see you all online, you know, you lay your food out and it's all nice. I don't do that. I don't have the time for it. I don't have the patience for it. I'm not trying to, to put it in the refrigerator. I just want something that I can eat and keep going. What about people who are not good at meal prep? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I would drive a trainer crazy because I'm not doing that. <laughs> I know with me, uh, with me personally, uh, a big thing that helped me with my results is I, I use the Herbalife products. 
that help with the protein. So I do the meal replacements twice a day, so it make it easier for me that I'm still getting some healthy into my body each day. I try to focus on eating a healthy meal as well, but if I do slip and I have a meal, I don't feel as bad because I know the remaining of my day, I'm putting some good nutrition in my body. So okay. it's easier for me when I'm on a go, if I need to do anything, but I also make sure I carve out time. Like if I want the results, I have to make time to get the results that I want. So I go and I meal prep. It can take about 30, 45 minutes sometime. It can be something very simple, but just healthier to make sure that you're having a healthy meal. Because typically when you don't have that, you're gonna kind of mess up and just stop anywhere to get something quick to eat. I need a wife to do that because I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Brene, so your husband also uh, is into fitness. When you do when you do meal prep and all of that, do you do it for both of you all, or do you even do meal prep for the week? Yes, it's a little challenging, but. When I do meal prep, I meal prep for the whole week and I meal prep for the whole family. And I do more of a smorgasbord. So I'll cook the meats, I'll cook, you know, the separate carbs and the, and the vegetables and you can kind of go in there and get what you want. So I might not do the meals that are, okay, you take out one package of meat. Oh, of meat, okay, gotcha. But, but pick and choose what you want. So like Wendell was saying, as long as you have those foods that are ready and you can kind of know, okay, this is in the fridge, I can go get this or you know, you, you have an idea of what you're going to eat throughout the week that has helped me and um, him so much. So it, it works for us. And then also knowing the places to go when you're out and you don't have time to prep. So there are a lot of restaurants that cater to people who are trying to get their lives together and trying to eat healthy. And if you know those places to go and what to get from those menus, then you're still okay, so. What's, what's, your, um, what's your Instagram, Brene? Brene underscore go strong underscore Holman. Spell Brene. B E R N A I. Right, because you know that ain't how they spelling it, right? <laughs> they be like A Y at the end, right? A with the little thing on top of it. <laughs> and Wendell, what's your Instagram again? Uh, it's that dude duty. So it's D A T D U D E underscore D O O D Y. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there it is. We are out of time. But listen, if you are anything like me, you just need prayer is what I'm telling you. <laughs> sometimes it's a good month. Sometimes it's a bad month. And what we're trying to make sure you understand is don't beat yourself up to the point to where you get discouraged and you just stop altogether. Keep moving, keep pressing, keep pushing because it does get easier and you will get the results that you're looking for as long as you know what it is you have to do to get there and you get it done all right so to my guests Brene and Wendell thank you for joining me I appreciate you so much yes sir this is the Lonnie Hunter show right here on the Rama television network see you next week <laughs>